Welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany, and today I'm going to tell you my top 10 favorite movies of 2022. Now, 2022 was a pretty strange year for movies. We got a whole mix of a bunch of different kinds of films, from huge blockbusters that you'll probably see on this list, to small, weird, indie movies that really broke out. My goal with this top 10 list is to have a good mix of the both big and small films that I think are worth your time. So let's start with number 10, Avatar The Way of Water. James Cameron put everything he had into this movie and it showed. The 3D immersiveness experience of that film was almost as good as the first one, or even better in some cases. The 3D immersiveness really added to the film and really got you feeling like you're on Pandora with the sillies. Every frame was a breathtaking visual masterpiece, expertly framed by a director who definitely knows what he's doing. However, I do have a few problems with the script. I do think the story and the characters are weak. I overall didn't enjoy this movie as much as the first one, which is why it's at number 10. However, I would still recommend this film to you if you go see it in theaters in 3D the way it's meant to be experienced. That is the best way to enjoy this movie, and at the very least, you will walk away feeling like you just experienced something wholly new and original, even if the script is just okay. And number 9, Everything Everywhere All at Once. Now, you've probably seen or heard a lot about this movie over the past year, unless you've been under a rock, <laughs> and it's for a good reason. It's a very cleverly written story about a woman who just wants to finish her taxes. But lo and behold, she gets sucked into a multiversal war to save her universe and her relationship with her daughter. It's a wacky, bombastic, crazy, totally weird movie, but at the center of it is a really sweet mother-daughter relationship. It's an original story, so that's something I want to see more of, but it's more than that. It's a unique, interesting story with a hook, the kind of original films I feel like Hollywood should be making more of. You will see things in this film, visuals, that you have never seen before in any other film. And I want to see more creativity from Hollywood like that in future movies, which is why it, it, it just had to make this list. And I really hope you go and see it if you have not seen it yet. And number eight is Bullet Train. This is another film you may or may not have heard of, but if you haven't, it's a movie starring Brad Pitt as an assassin, where his next mission leads him to a train to Tokyo, where he's surrounded by other assassins that all want to kill each other. And wackiness ensues. If you like zany humor, offbeat kind of movies, you'll like this film. It's got a lot of crazy cameos, bad bunnies in this movie, and he's actually pretty good in it too. You get some really creative action scenes with some cool like anime graphics. The, the production design is really really slick and cool looking. I just thought it was a very neat looking film. And in the end, you get a nice couple of twists in there that I actually didn't see coming, so I thought that was pretty cool. If you're just looking for a fun movie where a bunch of people try to kill each other in increasingly crazy ways, this is the film for you. You will definitely have a lot of fun watching this movie. And number seven, Nope. This is Jordan Peele's latest movie after doing Get Out and Us, and I actually think after Get Out, this is pretty close up there to being one of his best, if not the best. I actually think I like this more than Get Out. Kiki Palmer is a revolution in this. So is Daniel Kaluuya, but this is really Kiki Palmer's movie. She steals the whole show. If you're not sure what it's about, it's about a brother and sister who live out in the countryside. They work on looking after animals and training them for movies, so it's a lot of commentary about Hollywood. But lo and behold, they find an alien that's kind of just chilling up in the sky, and the brother and sister decide that they want to try to catch it on camera to prove that they've spotted an alien. And so much of the movie is just about them trying to get the alien on camera. And it's a very interesting movie. Like, I at no point in this film was I ever able to predict what was happening next. It, this movie constantly kept me guessing on where it was going, where is the story heading, what does this mean? And it doesn't really give you a lot of answers to any of those questions until the very end. So if you do watch this movie, just give it to the end. Even like me, when I first saw this movie, at least for the first half of the film, I was like, oh no, what is this? Where is this going? I wasn't sure if I was even liking the movie or not. And then we got to the end. It was all put together and it finally made sense. And I was like, oh, okay, that's what this movie's about. So just give it a chance. Give it to the end. And I promise you, I think you'll really like this movie. Number six, 
Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Now this movie had a mountain to climb when it came to sequels. Of course, it's hard to move on without your main lead due to the tragic passing of Chadwick Boseman, but I felt like this movie not only succeeded in proving why they should have continued in the first place, but actually elevating the movie and the world of Wakanda entirely. Not only did we got to see more of the minutia of how Wakanda is interacting with other nations, which I really enjoyed, but we also got introduced to Namor and Telokan and that whole culture and backstory, which I thought was really engrossing. I think Namor is probably already one of my new favorite Marvel characters. Plus, I was really invested in Shuri's arc, which I thought was expertly done in this film. You really understood her grief pain and anger and why she was making the decisions that she made and without spoiling anything there's a cameo in this movie that i think really took the script and just bumped it up a notch because it was perfect for shuri's character arc and where she was in that film and i just thought it was really well done considering the circumstances that they had to deal with and i'm just really impressed with director ryan coogler's work and number five, Glass Onion. I just watched this movie only a couple of days ago, and I still can't stop thinking about it. It's the next sequel in the Knives Out franchise. I really loved the first Knives Out. I thought the murder mystery was really fun and cleverly written, and it was fun to just kind of unwrap the layers, so to speak. And Glass Onion took that and just really ran with it. I would describe this movie, first and foremost, to just be fun. Yeah, there's a lot of commentary, and the film does parody a lot of what's kind of ridiculous about our modern society. But at the heart of it, it's just a fun movie. Like, I was on the edge of my seat in the, the second half of this film, as the whole film kind of turns on its head and you see everything from a different perspective. And I just thought that was so neat. The film allows you to sort of guess along with the characters in the movie as to who's responsible, who did it, who killed who. And you're trying to piece together all the clues just as much as Daniel Craig's character. Not to mention Janelle Monet. I mean, she makes this movie work. The second half of this film, and if you've seen the movie, you get why I'm saying that. Janelle Monet is like as key to this film working as Ana de Armas was to Knives Out. And if you like fun whodunits, really campy, crazy acting, also some really interesting character work from some really good, talented actors, you will like this movie. And number four, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Now, I, I already did a review of this movie. It's on my channel. I'll link it below. But just to reiterate, I think it's really charming, beautiful. You can tell it's made by people who are actually really passionate about their craft and what they do. I thought the characters in it were super heartwarming and likable. I thought the story was really clever how they really took the traditional Pinocchio story and added a bunch of real world history to it. I thought that really elevated the, the story of Pinocchio a lot. It's just a damn good film and please watch my review of it because I go into very fine detail like plot by plot why that movie is good. So watch that video and watch the movie. And now we're at my top three favorite movies of the year. These last three films were really hard to place on this list because I kind of love them all equally, but to varying degrees, which is how I was able to break it down. Number three, Pearl. If you haven't seen Pearl, it is a small indie movie. It's a horror movie about a woman who's stuck on a small town farm taking care of her parents. And she has dreams of going off and being a huge Hollywood star. But in the process, she goes a little stir crazy, a little actual crazy and you know she starts killing people because naturally that just happens when you're bored on a farm but it, it's so 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 good like i love all the films on this list but i'm telling you the top three are like way above everything else on this list pearl is just that good mia goth i hope she gets so much work from this film the fact that she's not seriously being considered for an oscar nomination is a crime she deserves way more recognition, and I want to see Mia Goth and everything. Not only that, but this film is playing on The Wizard of Oz. It's even filmed in the same style as that movie. So even though it's a horror movie, it has like this sort of sickeningly sweet, bright, saturated color palette and look to it which I think actually makes the film even more terrifying because anything could happen at any point, even in broad daylight. And it's just, it's so dang good. Please watch this movie. If you want to see a tour de force performance by an aspiring actress in a really cleverly written horror movie, watch Pearl. I can't, I can't give it enough praise. Just watch it. And number two, Top Gun Maverick. This list cannot be complete without Top Gun being on it. 
it just couldn't. There has yet to be a theatrical experience that has topped that scene where Tom Cruise goes to fly the mission to prove that it can be done before anyone else does it. I mean, that scene had me on the edge of my seat, my veins full of adrenaline. Like, I haven't had that kind of experience with a movie in a very long time. I felt not just emotionally invested in the action, but the characters, the story, I mean, I feel like Top Gun Maverick is a masterpiece in blockbuster making. I want more blockbusters to be made with this quality moving forward. And that includes like Marvel movies, Star Wars, everything. If we can have films as good as Top Gun Maverick where a lot of the action is real, there's not a, an over-reliance of CGI, but there's still really good character work and interesting things to be said, we can have that in more blockbusters. Not everything has to be as bad as Jurassic World Dominion. Come on, Hollywood. Top Gun Maverick showed you the blueprint. Now you just have to follow it. This film, you've probably seen it because a lot of people have, but if you haven't, try to see it on the biggest screen possible. It deserves it. And the number one film of the year, the number one film you just have to see, the film that I fell in love with and I desperately want to see again, The Woman King. Now, you may not have heard of this, so let me explain. It's a film starring Viola Davis. It takes place in the 1800s, where a small African tribe that is guarded by a class of warrior women, think the Dora Milaje from Black Panther, but for real. These women have to train to be like the most badass soldiers ever. But everything changes when some slave traders come and try to kidnap some of the women in the tribe. This doesn't go over well for the slave traders in the end, though. Spoiler alert. I love this movie. I think it's criminally underrated, and I'm really sad that it didn't get more recognition. Not only are the acting performances probably some of the best performances of any movie this year, not just Viola Davis, but also Lashana Lynch, who I think is woefully underrated, but it dealt with some pretty heavy themes that were personal to me and it just got me in the feels it got me emotionally you may cry i i did but it also has some amazing action sequences i mean those women are fierce again they're like the real life dora milaje this is like braveheart but even better it's an epic tale about women sticking together and fighting off evil and i just i couldn't love it more so that was my top 10 list of 2022 what is your top 10 list let me know in the comments i will read them and i will tell you what i think do you think i left any movies that should have been on this list. I know I left off a lot of big names, so please let me know in the comments if you disagree. Again, my name is Brittany. I do a lot of movie commentary and reviews like this, so if you like this, please subscribe to the channel. Also, like the video so more people can find it. It really helps the algorithm. My name is Brittany, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!